Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy JP in the podcast studio with Kathy. Hello. And Nate. What's up, fam? How are y'all? What's good? It, it's. Uh, I'm just shocked that you're included on lunch today. I was like looking at the list and I was Why like, that, I, that makes shocking. sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. I I'm literally like, wow, went Kathy's there. coming to lunch with us. Oh at, at, and at then the you seminary? got excited and you said, "What a fun squad!" I was did, it because I my name was that. there? I did say Aww, that. Yeah, Nate yeah, yeah. misses me. Yeah. He does t- like me. Should we tell them of the latest news? Yeah. Yes. She's sleeping with her coworker. Well, we have and, already established and, that Matt. And I feel like we need to update our HR. Got, actually got pregnant Irish. by her coworker. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what they're not so, saying so in a saying nice way. So we're saying this before the Wall Street Journal can, is that can post about it. Her baby's daddy is actually I'm, in the room. No yes. way. Matt is on staff, and I'm now back on staff in a part-time role. And I'm excited. And I think y'all are excited. Clearly, you've missed me. Uh, honestly, I'm, honestly, I'm, you being on staff will impact me zero because you are in a different ministry and you basically don't work. Like, you won't be at staff meetings. Yeah. I'm like, You're gonna be sad I, about I that. will not notice. <gasps> wow. <laughs> well, thank you. I feel so welcomed <laughs> back. Yeah. That's awesome. Cue the streamers. Yeah. Really Cue throwing me streamers. a party. I, I won't even notice you're here. He, yeah. Listen, he's not, it's not, that's not true because he was, he, what he told us is he was like, uh, and what we've actually had to do is we've taken a portion of his salary oh. and kind of reallocated thank that. You. That's how we were able to do this. Yeah, so it's a very generous thank you. offer. Thank you yeah. for your sacrifice. Hey, that's that's He's just great. mad we won't let him in women's ministry because that's the role I took. And I'm, he's been begging to be in there. I'm since totally day kidding. One. Nate hadn't been paid in years. So. <laughs> <laughs> he just don't keep showing up, man. That's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. Hey, I think it's I think it's been worth it for all you, the friendships I've made along. You the know way. what, Nate? You just don't need to be jealous of this new opportunity for me. Why? I'm setting up the topic. What's Get the it? topic? Yeah, what, I don't know. What are you talking about? Jealousy. We're talking about jealousy. Oh, she wants to talk about jealousy. Competing with other people. Why do you want to talk about jealousy? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I just decided we were going to. I think because she's it. got the third most Instagram followers of us three. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why. I don't even look at that. How do you know that information? Well, because I. Because you've looked so, at so you it, because it point, matters to you. You get to a you? point where it stops telling you exactly how many. It just put, it just has the K. Wow. Yeah, so. Oh wow. Yeah. What's Jake, it? So Jake this and is I a, know about it. This is something somebody <laughs> reached out and said, "Well, y'all talk on him." So we totally. Didn't, we gotta we, pick it. We got it. We don't. Do we have the line that they can call and leave a message? Do we have that going yet? That well, I don't needs think to that's. Uh, I don't think that's ready yet. But it's coming. Well, is I that thought, what you're I saying? That I think we do. Yeah. Well. Okay. I was told we do. If we've got it. Okay. Coley's got it and I don't have it. Okay, we will be in the weeks ahead. We're going to publish a number for you to leave a message on what you would like to talk about. And that's gonna you're going to be on the air. So we're going to take your recording and that's going to set up our topic. So, so what I'm, if what if it's like, hey, my boyfriend maybe not is a Christian and they like don't want their voice to be heard. We can, can use can AI use, software. Is there like an app where it can be like, hey, my, my boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I want you each to do that one more time. <laughs> Okay, you first, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the most aggressive <laughs> snort ever. I really hit the mic at the wrong time. I'll wow, be I'm sorry. Jeez, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on, man. Oh, it's like a funny sound. I'm yeah, not gonna hear. make it. No, no, just, just. My <laughs> boyfriend. Wait, why are you doing that with your mouth? <laughs> I feel like you have to sound like you have a marble in there. Oh, oh my I'm goodness! I'm trying to not sound like myself. I'm embarrassed you do it. for you. You do it. <laughs> wow. Oh Whoa. my god! Uh, stop! Just stop! <laughs> stop! Stop! Okay, so it, listen. It is so hard to not be jealous of people today, young adults. Uh, Perhaps you're in a season you don't want to be in, and then you look at Instagram. Oh, that person Dude. just bought a house. Oh, that person just got a raise. That person is is now married. That Instagram person has does kids. not help, man. And it's so hard to be happy for people when they're living the life that you want to live. So how do you how do you keep yourself from being being jealous? Man, I think the enemy uses this, and I think if you are a jealous person, you you don't even you don't see it. You just walk around with that feeling all the time. And you're you're two faced because you feel like you have to celebrate yes. their pregnancy. Right. 
you feel like you have to celebrate you know their new house you feel like you have to celebrate their accomplishment all while secretly inside you're like man why not me why not me why why don't i have the boyfriend why don't i have the relationship why don't i have you know why didn't i get that job why did i get overlooked and, and really anytime you do get passed over somebody's being celebrated and so you f you sit in that regret and the and the the fake celebration the whole time and i'm just like man that will create some misery and the enemy will use it to bring about depression mm -hmm. if you if it goes unchecked i think this is so important that you know we the the scripture says rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn mm -hmm. And so what does it look like for us to rejoice with those rejoice? And I, I was thinking about this. I, I try to audit my own thoughts, like, hey, what's really happening in my heart, my mind? Yeah, at times. your motive. My friend moved here recently, and I was, um, we, we, like, told them about a house. It's on a street that, candidly, I've always wanted to it's live on. It's an awesome street. It's hard to get on this yeah. street because it's a cul-de-sac. And right when he was moving, this house goes up. And I told him, I was like, dude, bro, this is the house you got to buy. Yeah. And they were like, eh, I'm, uh, we're, you know, that's not and. And I was like, and I'm like, no, dude, you the, trust me. Like, this is where you want to be. This is where you want to be. And so they end up buying the house. They're on the street. And like, I was walking through it recently and I'm like, this is awesome. This is awesome. And I, there's like a part of me for mm -hmm. a sec, like for a minute, like, I don't know how long, but there was a part of me that's like, dang, why not us? You know, yeah. like, why didn't yeah. we? Like, I, I, and then I was like, I had to repent of that. I was like, Lord, no, free me up just to celebrate totally. him. You know? Okay, so that is kind of my question. I'm because uh, you said earlier, like you're not to be hypocritical and like say something like two faced. You use the word two faced. People who like celebrate publicly with their mouth, like oh, congrats on the job, but like secretly they're upset that yeah. they don't have it. Yeah. But what do you do though? Like when someone has something that you really want that you've been longing for, maybe it's yeah. singleness. Your friend just started dating this awesome guy, and you want to be happy for them, but like you are dealing with jealousy or discontentment, like. How do you do that in a non two faced way? Man, this stuff is real. Like, I yes. mean, just like always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Oh, yeah. When we. Always when, the Nate, never the JP. Yeah. Uh -huh. When we got <laughs> pregnant, I was going to go somewhere deep, but you're like always trying to That's pull me offside. When we got pregnant and we were expecting, um, we had communicated that to someone and, uh, it, you know, close to us and they just ran out of the room. Yeah. Oh. Like they heard that and they just, they just like, we we're like, hey, guess what? We're pregnant. Yeah. And it was like that ghost white look like oh really and then they just ran and it was so potentially hurtful totally and you know and so it's like they're hurt right yeah. and, and then, then, and then hurt we're you. hurt yeah. and then and i think you have to you have to um be gracious in those responses but you can't avoid them like sometimes okay. life is you actually have to go through those yeah like, so, uh, um, man, I'm going to, when I tell my best friend who's been overlooked <laughs> that I got the promotion, like, I know that they're going to think, you know, this is And I think you just got to acknowledge all of that, like yeah. the messiness of it and not, not, and try not to be hurt by their lack of excitement because you know Why? they're missing out. And just is the more mature person needs to be gracious in that of like, hey, I've got some news. I want to share it with you. Yeah. I, I'm really want you to be happy with me and i know there's going to be a part of this that's that's going to disappoint and kind of bring up these emotions totally. and the more mature person really needs to like go slow in those yes. curves you know and just say all the things and uh and that's hard i mean it's just it's a messiness of life and then for the person who is experiencing jealousy you know Ro uh, romans 12 says love must be sincere mm -hmm. And just like the the love that the scripture calls us to, even the greatest commandment, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. There's an aspect of of loving someone that is just celebrating their wins with them, celebrating life with them. And so when you can't, you have to be honest with yourself and use those moments as the classroom. Like search your heart, say, man, what is going on? How do I feel? Why am I not genuinely excited for them? And like, let me, let me acknowledge that sin and then bring it to the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't do. Yeah. Hey, can I just, can I be honest with you? When you told me about the promotion, when you told me about the pregnancy, when you told me about the new house, the new car, when you told me about the, the raise or the new job or the new relationship, I felt jealous. I felt envious. I, there was a moment right there yeah. where I just, I coveted what you had. <laughs> 
and I wasn't free to celebrate what the Lord gave to you and not me, and I am so sorry. Will you please forgive me for my governed celebration? Will you please forgive me for my inauthenticity? And that's embarrassing. Yeah. It's humiliating, yeah. and it will make you more like Jesus. Dang. Here's, <clears throat> here's the thing I'm thinking. I don't think we treat that that feeling inside of us as a sin. Like, yeah. I think we feel in, entitlement was the word that popped into my mind as you're talking. It's yeah. like, we, we feel, feel entitled, entitled to, to good things. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, we feel like, well, I I mean, I'm, oh, I hate even to use this, but infertility, like, we've been trying for this, this good gift and we've been, you know, praying for it and working towards it and we don't have it and you do. And that is a hurt, um, but the jealousy is a sin in it, or yeah. you could use anything in, in that fill in the blank. But I think we why like feel why entitled. does God care so much about that? Like Ten Commandments, do not cover your neighbor's wife. Like why why does God care about that jealousy? Because you give the devil a foothold and he and he pulls you out of intimacy with Christ. And um and 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 God loves us so much he doesn't want us to despair, he doesn't want us to experience depression. Like this is a foundation of much depression. And so if I sit there and I, I just lament over my lack of athletic ability or that, you know, my dad didn't throw the football with me or I was I was born in this environment. A couple lack of good looks. A couple things. Yeah. A couple things. Um, there's always someone in a worse position than you are who's handling it much better than you are. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so whatever you lack, there's someone in the world with less and more joy. And a lot of times, you know, traveling, going other places, experiencing other cultures and being with other people, you really see that. Like, I, mean, I just remember being in places with where we're much less mm -hmm. uh, affluence than America and yet much bigger grins, much bigger, jo much more joy and kind of like, man, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? And I think so just realizing that first is like there's always someone with less and more joy. And so the joy is a decision. It's not circumstantial. Mm -hmm. It's not driven by what you have or by what you don't have. And that's why, you know, Paul says, I've learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. He says, I've learned the secret of contentment in wanting, that we can still desire something wow. and find contentment and find joy. And then I think when you, when you really can draw joy from other people, like when I can truly be excited for what you have, like we talked to uh, Pastor Tim Ross recently, like he and I, we did the same thing. We we're in ministry together. And it's so easy for me to scoreboard and think, OK, well, my ministry grew bigger and my platform grew bigger. But then I'm telling you, he took off and all his world grew much bigger than mine. And I'm and I said in there, like, I'm free to just celebrate that, mm. like to celebrate the hand of God. Because it's not a zero sum game. Yeah. Like somebody else's wins are not your loss. Yeah. Like somebody else getting married doesn't mean you're not getting married. Right. You know, and it's just like, I think we have to, somebody else's promotion doesn't mean you're not getting promotion. And candidly, a lot, I mean, here's the deal grateful people win. Mm -hmm. I said that on here recently. Like a lot of times, it's the attitude that drives the outcome. And, and we always feel like we get the short end of the stick. Because we always feel like we get the short end of the stick. And it's like the that our attitude is driving that reality. And it's, man, people who choose joy and can find joy in situations, mm -hmm. they win all totally. the time. Totally. But sometimes it just feels like uh, I'm not seen by God, where mm -hmm. it's like uh, Scripture says, delight in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And it's like, man, my desires are to have this job, this amount of money, this much comfort, this wife, this child. And then when, when I don't have them, it's like, it's like, I mean, I can't trust you God. You feel like God is keeping something good from you. Yeah, like like I'm being ripped off. And then other people who don't deserve it get more than what I have. James tells us every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of heavenly lights. So the good gifts we have come from God. And there's an enemy on earth who seeks to steal, kill, yep. and destroy. And so I think we have to give the credit where the credit is due. God is accredited for all of the good things that we have, and the enemy is take has, uh, deserves the credit for the bad things that happen to us in a fallen world. We've got to know that. That's really important to understand that in, in the Christian life. And I, I 
you know, because somebody has, so like, it's just like, what do you want, right? Let's say you want money and somebody gets a seven figure job and you're like, that's not fair. They have a seven figure job. But that seven figure job, it's time, only time will tell if that's a blessing or a curse. Totally. Yeah. That can be a gift from the Lord or it can be a curse from the enemy. And we don't know. Uh, the seven figure job may be the thing that drives the adultery, which causes the aver divorce, which causes the kids to hate you. And so it's like sometimes I don't think we yes. know what we're asking for. Yes. And really, the oh, that's good. The end game is to be faithful with what we have. That's what he says in the scripture. Whoever's been faithful with little, mm -hmm. like that's who I'm going to give more to. And you know? to trust that God is sovereign and he has you where he wants you. So maybe you don't get the promotion, and like you're saying, that ends up being like the absolute best thing yeah. for you. But I think what also jealousy reveals is a lack of trust in God in us. Yeah, it's like, like we think he's either withholding or we just think that he is after everyone else's good but not ours. And that is a lie we need mm -hmm. to confess and repent of. The boundary lines have fallen in, in pleasant, pleasant places. places, right? Surely it's I have a, a delightful inheritance. I mean, you, you, you could feel this. I'm, I'm trying to think about how to have a real conversation here. It's like yeah. you, you were here before I was. Yeah. Right. And you, you could have wanted the lead pastor in like position or whatever. And it's like my hopes are whatever is given to me, like I'm able to ter in turn give opportunity to you. Sure, right. Yeah. But it's like, how do you how do you wrestle through that in a real way? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like there was there was certainly something to that where it's like, man, we, when we didn't have a pastor, I got to preach all the time. And people were like, this is amazing because we don't yeah. have a pastor. But this guy, yeah. this young guy wants you to go. teach. Yep. And then we announced JP, and everyone's clapping for him instead yeah. of me. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there was something to that. And I mean, like the 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 truth is, you you coming to Harris Creek will be one of the most important things that's ever happened to me, in oh. in like the the best way. Yeah, so thank you this for is that. A yeah, for moment. sure. Touching moment. Thanks for yeah. saying I, something kind. Yeah. <laughs> I really struggle with jealousy in comparison specifically um, and can let myself feel like I'm competing with those around me. I don't know if it is more of a, a girl struggle than a guy struggle. Do you feel like y'all? I think it's different. Well, you, you maybe we maybe it shows in different ways, but I think the competition thing is real. Yeah. For, you know, any, you know, any trans person. sex. OK, well. Yeah. And so I'm trying to think of like, realistically, what do I do when I have those feelings? I think the first is like, I try as authentically as I can to be happy for those because of the scripture that you said. And then any part that's like not congruent with that, like any gap there, I just have to pray a lot <laughs> and ask God to help me. And one thing that really helps me is specifically if I'm feeling insecure about a person or I feel like they're getting more attention, pray for that person. And, like, actually pray, like, really big blessings on their life. Like, God, I actually only pray that you would increase their their platform or their ministry or give them more opportunities to teach, bless them with an even better teaching ability. Um, and I feel like sometimes you have to pray your heart to where it should be. Yeah. Like, my heart is not where it needs to be when I start each day. Yeah. And I can't get it there myself. Yeah. I think I have to just ask God. And so sometimes like asking God on behalf of another person can be a way to, to help get there even quicker. Yeah. So there, I think there's, um, uh, I, th I think it's really practical. There's people who are hearing this right now and realizing for the first per first time in their life, they are a jealous person, Yeah. you know? And, um, and I think as you realize that prayer is step one, like Lord change my heart in this, like help me to be someone who rejoices with others. And as you become someone who rejoices with others, like you're going to you're going to find that more stuff's going to come your way. And I, I hate saying this because people are like, are you talking about manifesting? Are you talking about believe it, achieve it? Are you talking about prosperity gospel? No, I'm talking about the way that God wired his people. Like what I just see in the scriptures and have experienced firsthand is just like when you're for people, yeah. like people want to be around you yep. and you, you literally become a better friend, a better lover of people. And as you love people better, you're a better follower of Christ. And as you're a better follower of Christ, God grants you with more opportunity to love people. And it's just this, you get caught in this circular cycle that just towards winning, I'm using winning in air quotes of like a good life, mm. a better life, you know, not surely there's exceptions. You could do all of that and get struck by lightning. Right. And then wake up in glory, but. Well, and also like another way to fight comparison is gratitude and just being grateful for what God's given you. Like what if you actually have a lot going on for you? What if like God has given you all these amazing things and yet you're only focused on the things you don't have and you're missing out on all the blessings that he does. So I think another 
when I feel discontent, I have to practice even more gratitude for the things that God has given me. And then I feel like as you start to notice those things, it's like, oh, wow, there's like this whole world out there that God has given me and blessed me with. And then that just helps you. Yeah. I don't know. Look at your life even with more contentment there. Yeah. I've heard it said if you want uh, to get what you want, help everyone else get what they want. Oh. It was, uh, it was on the wall at Zig Ziglar. Um and Zig, so Zig Ziglar was like this motivational speaker, sales guy, wrote lots of books. He's since passed away, but he like op, optimism and positivity marked him. He was a believer, he was a follower of Jesus. And I went into his office and on the wall it said, you can have whatever you want in life, just help everybody else get what they want. Yeah. And, and I don't, listen, that's a proverb, it's not a promise. But yeah. what I would tell you is just as I raise my kids... I'm like, just look to use what you have to serve others. And that is the life of Jesus. Totally. Mark 10, 45, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. At the center of the gospel is Jesus using what is available to him to serve the world. And so if we want to be Christians, little Christ, Jesus followers, then we should use constantly, perpetually, consistently, and and always what we have available to us, we should use it to serve others. Mm -hmm. That's what I told Monica this morning. I was leaving the house. Somebody wanted to host a, a birthday party at her house, and I'm like, babe, when we built this house, and not that she was resistant to it, but we were just talking about this. I said, when we built this house, we said, hey, we're going to build this house, and maybe it's bigger or nicer than we're comfortable yeah. with, uh, but we're gonna we're just gonna give it away. Yeah. You know, if somebody wants to do something, we're just it's just a yes. If somebody wants to stay here, it's just a yes. It's a yes. And so we, we try to do that, and, and I think that's how we need to live our life. Mm, that's good. Isn't there something, though, in your life where you're like, I'd be happier if I had blank? Like, isn't that true? Like, if, if you had... Mm, yeah, if, I'd be happier if I had more contentment, <laughs> you know? Oh. I mean, so, that's, that's wow. the reality is, like, there's nothing... Like, he says in the Scripture, in, in, he says, with food and clothing, we should be content with these. Mm -hmm. But whoever desires riches never has enough. Yeah. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And if we're honest, like there's just a lot of us that love what we don't have. And the essence of contentment is is like the desire for something unavailable to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the essence of discontentment, yeah. rather, is the desire for something unavailable to you. So if you desire something that you don't have, you're discontent. But if you, you look around, and you're like, I have enough. I remember when I learned this, a guy called me and was like, hey, I found this real estate deal. Uh, we can, it's a quick, you know, it's a quick hit, buy this house, sell it, I'll do the work, a, a quick 30 grand. And I just remember thinking, bro, I don't need 30 grand. Mm. Wow. And, it, and not because we're, like, especially in this, not because, you know, relatively speaking, you, because of where you're at and you have an iPhone available to you, yeah. you're, you're wealthy relative to the world. But where we were at in this season, we we did not have all that we needed, and we had no college savings. We had no, you know, we were in debt on our house. But I was just, I was just like, you know what? I don't want the allure to money to pull me off sides, to draw my focus away from what it is that I'm doing right now. And if I'm honest with you, like to tell you the whole truth here, I think God blessed that. Wow. Totally. Like I really think God was like that was a test, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bless that decision. Man, that's so good. If you think about it, like, isn't the analogy like the carrot dangling? Yeah. Like, there is always this illusion that, like, if we just had one more thing, one more bit of money, one more X, Y, Z, that we'd be happy. And I think when you, like, say, no, what I have right now is enough, what God's given me is enough, of course God's honored yeah. by that. Yeah. I, uh, as we've been talking about, I've been thinking about John the Baptist. Like, think about his life. Man, he, that's a wild like, dude. He did crazy things and developed this huge following. Yeah. Like, all these people are talking about him. He's important. And then all of a sudden Jesus comes along, Ooh. steals his followers, great, yeah. steals his platform, steals steals In a good his way. influence. <laughs> yeah. And his response is not, hey, where's my platform? Yeah. But he must become greater, I must become less. Gosh, what if we He's like went around and, and then, we were like Well and then and then what does Jesus say about him? He is the greatest so born of no, man. No yeah. greater born of a woman. <laughs> no greater I man, like mankind. Get, get out no of here, greater woke man Kathy. born of a woman. Yeah. That's I'm so <laughs> oppressive to women. No, I meant like mankind, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What if your goal was to make Jesus greater and everyone else around you greater and to disappear? Is that not a better life? Can we decide yeah. right now? Like, hey, the best thing I told, uh, you know, I, what brought me here, I read a book, Embracing Obscurity. Yeah. 
And I just, I mean, that, that's like a big part of it is like, what if your goal, uh, Count Zinzendorf said, um, preach the gospel, die and be forgotten. Mm, like everybody's trying to be remembered. What if the goal is to be forgotten? Oof. And what if you flip it on its head and say, no, man, I just want to use what's available to yep. me to make much of Jesus yep. and to serve others and die. Like that's the most important thing I think you're ever going to hear on this podcast apart from the gospel. Yep. Like if you are a follower of Jesus, use your life to serve those around you to make much of Jesus die and be forgotten. At the end of this life, you get a rock with your name on it that no one remembers. Today we're in the, we walk through the cemetery as a staff. We walk amongst rocks, some of them very, very old with dates on them that are like in the 1800s that nobody visits, okay? Mm. Nobody visits those rocks. There's a body, like a decaying body underneath that earth that nobody visits anymore, and that is our destiny on earth under the sun. So what what's going to matter? Like what's going to matter 100 years from now? What you did in the name of Jesus, mm. for the name of Jesus, period, nothing else. It is interesting what God does with humility, and this isn't like a guarantee of what always happens, but you're like, Part of the reason why I came was because of embracing obscurity. You have this massive ministry in Dallas. You came here and you're like, dude, people will know my name for six months and then I'm going to be a small town pastor and no one will know who I am. And that was like your genuine heart. And, yeah. and now I think more people know who you are. It's That's just crazy. interesting yeah. how, God, how God used that humility. I, I think it was only when I was okay with it. Yeah. And who knows? Like There may be more that he wants to do. That, that's the only thing that's holding him back from doing it is the fact that I want him to or need yeah. him to, you Oof. know what I mean? And for yeah. me, for my glory. Right. So, I mean, I, yeah, man, it's amazing what he's done. Thank you, guys. I mean, just, like, it's a good time to say thank you to the listeners and just, like, man, those of you that identify with us, you know, all over the country that you're listening to this yeah. and that you, you're you motivated in what you're saying. Man, you said country. I'm Someone emailed well. from, I'd never heard this before, the Faroe Islands. Dude, we should go there. I, there, it's yes, it's let's like go it's visit. like we should record from there. It's like off of Iceland. I mean, it's like the remotest place, and we're reaching the Faroe Islands. F A R O E. Check That's it out. Up. We should. Man, this is good. I think this generation. I don't know. I think every person needs this. Yeah. How to not compete, but to celebrate. Because that's it. Use what is available to you. Yep. To serve those around you in the name of Jesus. That's a life well lived, I promise. Mm -hmm. Hope that's helpful for you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is gonna throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.